Okay, so what are we doing now? Is just we're going to do a very little basic delay subroutine, just to demonstrate the use of variables and all that. And actually, the delay itself is a pretty useful way to waste a bit of time while you're waiting for readings or something to happen. So yeah, th this is basically what, what you're going to do. So for every single program, effectively, you're going to uh, create a C block. Now C block is effectively a little block of variables that you're going to define. Like in normal programming languages, not, not in all of them, but in just a certain few, you need to uh, specify your variables at the start or at a very specific place. And this is no different. So a C block just defines a few memory locations and gives them names that you want to specify. Like let's say we want to use delay one, delay two. So it's going to name the memory location hex 20, delay one. Then after that, it's going to name the memory location uh, 0x21, uh, delay two. So it just defines variables and by, by actually just naming specific uh, general purpose registers after that name. So you'd use these exactly like you would variables and other programming languages. And the C block is just a very nice way just to do it everything all together. There are other ways of uh, defining them um, in different parts of the program, but this is just a bit more organized and helps you keep track of everything. So anyway, we have our variables defined, our counting variables. So effectively what we're doing now is we're going to move a little to working, specific decimal value, move working to file, the specific uh, thing in the working register, we're going to move that into delay one. And then we're going to create another little label. So we're going, I'm just going to uh, name it outer, the outer loop. We're going to effectively loop through the loops to create a specific delay. So we're going to move the little to working, move working to file, delay two, and then we're going to call this one inner. So this is the inner loop that's going to be executing most of the time. So what do you do in normal programming language when you, for example, do a for loop? When you do a for loop, you're either counting, counting up or you're counting down until a specific condition is met. This is no different. So we're going to be counting down in this case, we're going to be counting down uh, delay two. So what this does, it it stands for de de decrement file skip if zero. So what happens is it's going to a minus one from this every single time it executes. And if it is actually uh, one, uh, zero, then it's just going to skip this instruction. So we're going to say branch to inner, and then we're going to do the same to the outer loop. Delay one branch outer. So what, what's happening here is we're going to be moving a specific value that we want to count it down to up from down to zero into the outer, which is we, we're using delay one for. Then we're using uh, we're loaded, loading a specific value into the inner loop to count down from. So it's going to go, it's going to count down and count down. It's going to, so if it, let's say it is one, let's say it is two and it counts down and it becomes one. Is it going to skip this? No, because it's not zero. So it's going to go back here again. So it's go count down, count down, count down, count down. And if it finally Mac actually is zero, then and only then this instruction is skipped and now we're here. Now we're here. And then it does the exact same thing with uh, delay one. It's going to check if delay one is zero, then it's going to skip this. And then we're effectively at the end of the subroutine, then we should return. So it's going to loop here, it's, it's going to loop here, and then finally get out and decrement one and then it's going to branch here again. If it branches there, it's going to go back here, move, moves another value back into it, moves back into it, and the whole process starts over again. So you can see basically how this is the outer loop and this is the inner loop. It's constantly going to be executing this and at whenever this runs out, it's going to execute 
this. And eventually, when even this runs out, then and only then will it return. So let's say we want to make it 50 and 50. So the inner loop runs 50 times, the outer loop runs 50 times. So from then on, you're going to count the number of instruction cycles that every single one of these takes. So the way you find out these instruction cycles is basically you look up look them up in the data sheet, you go to instruction set summary, and then you for each little thing here, you can actually add them up. So we know the instruction cycle, one a single instruction cycle. So we're going to mark this as one. That as well as one. And I know these others are one as well. This is one. And then we're going to look these up again. Decrement file, skip zero. There it is. So uh, it, the cycles is one and two. And then we have to, then we have to uh, see. And look at this little note. It takes three cycles if it skips and is followed by a two word instructions. So what that means is certain instructions take a single uh, little memory equation. The, the instruction is not a long instruction. For example, the move little to working is not a long instruction. So it only takes one single word, program memory word to do. But for example, the branch uh, instruction, let's see, the branch instruction, it, it specifically gives a one word. It only takes one word. So it is a two cycle instruction. So you take, and it also gives two cycles every time it does branch. So let's say two and two. And if it only gives it, if, if it doesn't skip effectively the, the decrement skip of zero, let's, let's look at that again. Now, if you were to use a go to instead of a branch, this would be relevant because of go to is a two word instruction. Because just for interest sake, the it is a two word instruction because effectively the location it should go to is baked into the instruction itself. It's not just an argument or what it's baked into the instruction. And it's pretty large. Uh, it's a 20-bit value that you're specifying here. It's not the normal 8-bit value like usual. It's a 20-bit value. So the instruction is pretty long. So it takes a while to load it back in again. But these little um, values in brackets, that means if it does skip, it takes two. If it does not skip, it takes one. So it used, this usually takes one and takes two. But if and only if it does skip. So if it skips, it takes one and another one. So if it skips, it takes one, then another one. So the grand total being for all our instruction cycles are one, two, three, four, and five. So there, there are always five going to be executing. So it's five plus, and then it just this uh, times the outer. So the inner loop, it always takes one plus two, one plus two. So it's always going to be uh, 50 times three. Why 50 times three? Because this is the value in the inner register. That, that's, what, that's what we're going to multiply. It's going to do this 50 times before it eventually retires by just having this value zero and then branching. And that is just the inner loop. Now the outer loop is going to, when it gets out, it's going to add one, so it's going to give another one, and then it's going to execute one, and then another one. So it's going to execute one. So these are contributing to the final thing. And when, so every single time an outer loop runs, this is basically what happens every time. So you just nest them. You, you work you, you work inside out to actually determine how many cycles the out final loop takes. So then you take about, and then you times it with 50. Why 50? Because 50 is in this value. So let's make it 60 just for, just to eliminate some ambiguity. So 60. So it executes it 60 times. And this one plus two plus one is effectively just it loading it once, this one, then loading it again. 
and this little one loading it, loading it again, skipping once, plus these three. So that, that accounts for those three. It actually is one, another additional one. So that is effectively how you calculate the total delay of everything. And this out of five, that just means it's going to uh, just skip it once. So we're just going to, so you count this, then this, then this. These are the outer three. So this is effectively how you calculate how long your inner loop and outer loop take in. So to calculate the length of the delay, we just 50 times three plus five, these little five here, and multiply that by 60 plus three. And it's round about the same number. It, it could be a bit more, a bit less. Uh, remember, there's a quite a bit of overhead uh, with the branching and everything, but that, that's about the standard way you calculate the delays. And that is delays.